because everyone knows I am a fashionista. Hey guys, Mike here, and I'm playing Game Dev Tycoon. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna say this now. This is just sort of a filler episode, um, because I have absolutely nothing to record, and I'm waiting a couple of days before uh, me and Charles work on something. But uh, yeah, for now, I have to find like something to do, and I thought uh, I was trying to think of concepts for stuff that like I could do with the community uh, being involved in some way. And with this, I kind of had a bit of an idea. The game has yeah, I'll just show you, actually. Uh, I'm going to be starting a new game. So I'm going to go here. Go oh, new game. Nope, oh, that's really loud. God, sometimes I hate this program. It loves to just blast the volume into my ears. Anyways, um, what I'll be showing you is that... Eh, I'll, just, I'll get to the point later. Welcome to Game Dev Tycoon. In this business simulation, you have been transported back in time to start your very own game development company right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 35 years, you can build your dream company, create best-selling games, gain fans, and become the leader of the market. Before you can start your adventure, you have to give your upcoming company a name. Alright, so last time I just used plot points, uh, because I actually did try to record this earlier, but something came up with my family and I had to go and handle that, so I had to scrap the recording. So, um, let's go with flirt punts. Flirt punts. And the player's name will be Grimple. Call, let's call him Grimple. And just stick with this. Give him a nice sweater vest, because everyone knows sweater vests are gangsta. Uh, unlock all hints. Yes, I'm going to import all the info that I've had from before. Oh, God, i got to choose a save slot. <laughs> okay, uh, what was my last one? About a year ago. Ooh. Okay, so... I don't know, this one? Oh, oh we're writing that game. Okay, I didn't know. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to develop a new game. What we're going to do is, what you guys are going to help me with, is you guys are going to choose a topic. Like, right now there's a lot of them locked, but I'm going to unlock them as I go. So, if you guys can come up with a topic, I'll try to get that topic via research. And once I get that topic, so we're going to say uh, Cyberpunk, and we're going to choose a genre. So, let's say RPG. Actually, hold on, what's the platforms I got right now? Commodore 64, okay, so Adventure seems to be really in nowadays. So, I'm going to do an Adventure game. So, Adventure, it's an okay combo. So, let's try... School adventure? Huh, no, these all kind of suck for adventure, don't they? Okay, uh, just airplane simulation would probably be best. Yeah, and simulation is a triple plus? Yeah, let's do it. And we're gonna call it. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a, a good airplane pun. Or something equally stupid. Hmm. Amelia Earhart's training? Nah, nah, I don't even know how to spell Amelia, so yeah. <laughs> what's that, what's that, uh, one game? That, that series, actually, uh, Ace Combat? Let's, let's go with, uh, Deuce Combat. Because I'm that pathetic, I can't think of anything. Alright, so... Essentially what you guys are going to help me with is you're going to choose topics uh, and RPG combo, or not RPG, sorry, topics and genre combos. And maybe you can also choose, like, I guess, the console it's going to be on. Um, if you want to name it, go right ahead. It saves me some time. Alright, so, it's all about the gameplay, baby. It's all about the gameplay. But yeah, that's essentially just what you guys are going to do. You're going to just give me topics and genres to work with. And I'm going to do whatever I can to um, make those games possible. And we'll see what they get ranked, how much money they make me, or if they put me into debt. So yeah, you guys better not put me into debt. be a little pissed off if you guys put me into debt. Then there's also a lot of other things. Like, I have to uh, create a game engine. Although I think that might not happen in this recording, because it, it happens fairly quickly. No sound, no, it's all about the graphics. It's all about 2015 graphics. Actually, this is like, 19, the start of the PC revolution, so what was that? That was like, 1980 something? I don't know, I, I think it was before I was born. <laughs> Deuce Combat is ready! Let's do it, let's see how Deuce Combat does. The first reviews for our newly released game, Deuce Combat, came in. What did it get reviewed? 
Eh, six, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I might be getting a little sick right now, so I apologize for that. Alright, so we're getting an alright score so far. Hey, fuck you, all games. What, what's up with that? I'd be a dick about it. Okay, so generally you want to uh, generate game reports so you can, um... Yes, Pert Points, a newcomer in the game industry has just released their first game, Deuce Combat. The game received favorable reviews, but such a start, Pert Points, or Pert Points, are going to... Oh, no, it's Pert Punts. Pert Punts are, are sure to gain fans quickly. Yeah. So you know we're making the monies. Although every month we're going to have the yeah, monthly costs and all that crap. It's number 41 on the... There's 41 other games released this week. Jesus Christ. It's a lot of games in one week. We now have 10 fans. Yay! Hmm. I'm trying to think of if there's anything else you guys could help me with, because I guess you could help me name the game engine that I'm going to release at some point. Um, what else can you guys do? I can get employees, but I cannot um, name them, sadly enough. Because I would just name them after you guys. Uh... Well, yeah. Post-release analysis of Deuce Combat is complete, and we got the following results. Dialogue seems to be not very important for this type of game. Well, no shit. I don't think we even put in any uh, dialogue. I think we just said screw it. Okay, so we have 22 points. I'm going to research two new topics. We got ninjas. I think the next one I'll do will be... Uh, I've already got the Game Dev Tycoon achievement, where you make Game Dev Tycoon in Game Dev Tycoon. So I probably won't go with Game Dev. I think I'll go with uh, Dungeon. This achieved a company sales record with over 10,000 units sold. This is an important milestone in the history of Pert Punts. Sweet. We did a thing, guys. Oh, we can make movie games. Because those sell so well. Okay, so, uh, damn it, I really don't know what else to talk about, like, this game is very slow burning, it's like, uh, it, it's exactly what it is, it's just a dumb little idea, that's pretty fun to play for me at least, I, I think this is an interesting thing, because it lets me get, like, creative with stupid jokes, like, naming a game after something like, like Ninja Gaiden, but, you know, completely not Ninja Gaiden. So we'll do an, uh, a Ninja Action game, so Ninja Gaiden, <laughs> and, oh, it's only plus twos. A ninja strategy game? Are we are we making Shogun? Hmm. Dungeon strategy. We can make um Dungeon Keeper. Or actually, what, what was that new game that was released recently? Dungeons Two. Was Dungeons a, that big of a game that it warranted a, a sequel? Because I've never played it. Ah, god damn it! I'm sorry, guys. I'm feeling a little sick. Uh, huh, gotta think of a name for this one. It's a strategy game about a dungeon. <laughs> Can't just call it Dungeon Keeper. Fuck, I'll just call it Dungeon Keeper because I don't give enough of a damn. Sue me! <laughs> Keeper is plural, okay. I'm gonna get sued, aren't I? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, engine? A bit. See, because we know that strategy generally wants those things, because, um, like I said, like, plus three to whatever the hell it was in the center, that's generally just what, like, what uh, strategy games do. Like, strategy is the thing, but a dungeon strategy game might warrant something else instead. Deuce Combat is now off the market. It sold 11,000 units and generating $49,000 in sales. And we spent $5,000 of that already. Okay, so yeah, and, like, maybe... Like with dungeon, it might be artificial intelligence is more important than level design, but I'm going to say level design is the most important, and just kind of do that. Recent market studies suggest that oh, Govador64 is uh, steadily outselling com competitors in the PC section, sector, whatever. Cust uh, consumers prefer the lower price, greater availability, and the flexible hardware configuration over other home computers. Experts say this might spell the end of competing hardware manufacturers. <clears throat> World design, and maybe a little bit of sound. Just a little bit. 
This is totally not gonna get me sued. Actually, when was Dungeon Keeper made? Because I still think this is, yeah, it's still the first year. So it's not, uh, too far off. Not saying any new records for uh, these two. Usually I do. I'll just speed that along. There we go. So, what do we get? Loading. There we go. First review for our newly released game, Dungeon Keepers, came in. Oh, fuck you guys. Dungeon Keeper was an amazing game. And the last one says... Yeah! Fuck you, Star Games. You guys don't know shit. Don't know me about me and my dungeons. Wait, that's not weird. Okay, so dungeon strategy is a great combination. Artificial intelligence seems to be quite important for this game. Did I crank that, or did I say not to crank that? Ah, whatever. New topics. Okay, give me the topics. There we go. Aliens. Everyone loves aliens. We'll make Alien Isolation, but, you know, in 1980-whatever-the-fuck. Go into the rumored- oh, yeah, this is when the NES came out, so... Oh, god damn, I should know this. I think that was, like, 1989, wasn't it? Because I'm- <sighs> damn, I think the Super Nintendo came out in 1992. Right? And the PlayStation 1 was 1995 or 6? Oh my god, I actually don't do not even know. According to rumors, the Japanese company Nintendo is launching or planning to launch its very own home yeah, home gaming console. Nintendo is known for the widely successful arcade game Dinky King. Dinky King Many industry experts doubt that home gaming consoles will take off, but are eager to see what Nintendo will deliver. I, sh I should make Dinky King for their NES and see how they see how they like that. I'm so getting sued. Okay, music. Let's let's make Rock Band. Rock Band would be fantastic for this, the NES. But yeah, if you, as I said, if you guys come up with like a, a just a random concept, like it can be anything. It can be like a werewolves. It can be planes. It can be um, city like management or uh, business. Just like the weirdest shit you can think of. If you can think of something, we'll see how well it does. Well, it's sold more, I think. I wasn't paying attention. Develop new game. I mean, I probably should be building my game engine, but I'll wait for you guys to choose what I do with the game engine. Like, what I name it, uh, if I should hold off on buying stuff on it for it or not. Okay, let's do, let's do aliens. Alien action. Uh... Yeah, Commodore 64, why not? Oh, what are they called? The Govador or whatever. Uh. <sighs> yeah, let's, let's just fucking do it. Let, let's make E.T. the game. Was that on the Commodore 64? That was on the Activision. Or no, the Atari, not Activision. What the fuck. The Atari 2600, wasn't it? I think it was. <laughs> Or, hold on, we'll, we'll call it X-Ray the game. Ah, that XCOM reference, though. Uh, it's all about that engine and the gameplay. I don't give a shit about the sound or whatever. Oh, did they just release it? Oh, they didn't, okay. Today, Nintendo has confirmed recent rumors and announced their plans to release a home gaming console called TESS early the next year. What does the T stand for? The console features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed uh, controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannot speak. But yeah, what what does TES stand for? Because it's not Nintendo Entertainment System anymore. It's like I have no freaking clue. Artificial intelligence, level design. Hey, bugger. What's up, kitty kid? Kitty cat. <laughs> okay, so moving on. We'll do graphics. Lower that and do this. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Let's make the worst game of all time. Let's crash the gaming market. Yeah, new record in technology. We got it. And Grimple is just about to level up. 
So I gotta wait for the- God, yeah, I keep forgetting you have to wait before you can generate a game report. Our first reviews for our newly released game, X-Ray the Game, came in. Watch it get, like, zeros. What? Oh god, I'm changing gaming history. No! We're gonna have a butterfly effect. We're gonna have E.T. the game in, like, 2015. It's gonna have like updated graphics, it's gonna look fantastic, it's gonna play like shit. And there's still gonna be people that like call it out for not being close enough to the original. Hi there, I'm b I just finished X-Ray of the game and I'm impressed by your talents. You, you really shouldn't be. I'm in the contracting business and we could, we could use your skills like yours. If you're ever short on cash, just let me know and I can see if I can set some work for you. See if I can have some work for you. Jason Voorhees. Okay, Jason. Put, put down the notepad, jackass. You gotta fill the bar. Stop it! <laughs> Aliens and action is a great combination. Story and quests seem to be not important for this game, and level design seems to be quite important. Yarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Let's release analysis of mass grades complete. We got the point. Sounds to be not very important. Oh, thank you. Fucking that was helpful. Okay, more research, more topics. Fantasy. Okay, of course. That'd be like a final fantasy. Actually, now that I think about it, we are on the test. We could make the very first Final Fantasy game. And we call it like Last Adventure. Yeah, it's gonna be like the Last Adventure one. New topic, fantasy. Yay! What other top? No, stop it. I'm pretty sure I actually have mod on as well. That gives me even. Oh, medieval. Um, they give me even more topics. Uh, hold on. Go go to the menu game, mods. Tweak mod expansion module that allows you to tweak various aspects of the game. Steam. Um, I don't know. Okay, so apparently the game doesn't pause when I hit that uh, little button. So kind of screwed if I want to do something else. Um, you have completely uh, successfully researched the new topic, medieval. Yay! I loved Medieval for the PlayStation 2. Granted, I only played the second game. I never got to play the first. Fashion! Uh, game dev sports. Uh, let's go fashion. Because everyone knows I am a fashionista. I am the greatest looking man of our time, clearly. <laughs> I say as I adjust the collar of my shirt, which was fucking looking derpy as hell. Like, the back of it was kind of like pop, but the front was kind of down. I, I guess I, like, I just kind of pulled it out of the closet and just threw it on without really caring. Uh, recently released tests and home console by Nintendo has proven to be a mass success. Sales numbers have exceeded expectations so far. As one customer says, I love the games that come with a test, just like <laughs> X-Ray the game. And playing with a controller is so much more fun than on a keyboard. Yeah, I'm kind of forced to being a console gamer because uh, even with my laptop, I can play quite a few PC games without recording and they play fine. But I can't really play with a mouse and keyboard because I don't have a desk to use them on. So if I want to play stuff like that, I have to go upstairs, throw it on the kitchen table, and play it there. Or, if I want to be relaxed and be in my environment, I have to use a freaking futon as a table. So yeah, not good. Uh, let's, let's make a fantasy game. Or not fantasy, a fashion game. Fashion simulation. Uh, for the PC. What should we call it? We'll call it... Hmm. I was gonna make a Barbie joke, but nah. Seem that seems like too obvious to me. <laughs> Damn it, no, too many, too many bad thoughts going through my head. Ugh. God damn, what was the name of that fucking. Damn, what was that dude from Persona 3? The, the French dude who was the um, Temperance Arcana. I can't remember his name. I was gonna say it was about him. God damn it. Fuck, I would just do Barbie's stupid fucking fashion adventure. Damn it! Close enough. Barbie's stupid fucking fashion adventure. <laughs> Cause I don't care anymore. Okay. Engine. Gameplay and story and quest. Because a game about a fucking Barbie should clearly have one of the best stories of all time. You shouldn't put more than five minutes of uh, thought into Barbie's story mode. <laughs> and this is a game that's gonna sell to children. Barbie's stupid fucking adventure adventure. Yay! I don't know about you guys, but I played the shit out of that game. There you go. It's all about the graphics, yo. Just like Activision thinks. Moving on. There we go. Yeah, even more technology, apparently. Apparently, I'm making the best technology of all time. Oh, wait. Generate game report. God damn it. <laughs> New first reviews for a newly released game, Barbie's stupid fucking fashion adventure came in. I swear to God, if it gets nines. <laughs> My children love it! <laughs> oh, okay. Man, I am not doing very well. Normally I have at least one game that has gotten, um, like, eights and nines. Because usually I just think of, like, oh, well, what about this game? It sold well back in 19 whatever the fuck. Fashion simulation is a great combination. Level design seems to be quite important for this type of game. Certain studies suggest that the increasing variety of gaming devices that also create a market for more specialized games. Some yeah, okay. 
so now I should be able to um, choose between like younger audiences, everybody, and mature audiences. As more and more developers enter the market, we expect developers to focus their games on specific age groups to finally make an impact. Yeah, target audience. Okay, so I sort of need to do that. I'm only going to be able to research one new topic. Don't forget creating. No, I don't give a fuck. No. Custom engines are for nerds. Nerds. But yeah, how would you guys... Um, I think it's about time I ended this episode, actually. So, how would you guys tell me what you guys want me to do for, like, as I said, games, like, you're going to choose topics, genres, you can name it if you want, uh, choose a console, and it doesn't have to be just the ones I have now. Feel free to, like, give me a heads up for, like, future ones if you want me to make, like, oh, you should make Soul Reaver for the PlayStation 2, so I'll do Soul Reaver at some point, but it'll be, like, something derpy named, um, or you guys can come up with a name if you want. And, uh, I guess we'll move on to the game engine at some point, but you guys are going to have to tell me what you want me to name it. Because, uh, <laughs> last time I named it, I think I called it the Large Hadron Collider. So, yeah. Great name for a game engine. I probably shouldn't have done that. Okay, well, I'm going to quickly... Uh, hacking. Oh, we're going to make Watch Dogs. Alright, so... Oh, I guess this is a good time to end it then. I'm going to get this video off here. If you, guys, if you guys want to see videos similar to this one, just let me know. And until then, goodbyes. What's with that look? Kind of hurting my feelings. Well, your talks tend to get me stabbed, so I hope you can understand my apprehension. Fine, fair enough. Uh, gotta go down. So don't go to the Get him face, get him face. Say it.